Hi students, welcome to PhD Jobs and Admission. This is Gauri. So in this video, I have uh, teached you research methodology subject of Geetam University Research Admissions Test 2023. So in this session, we are going to see about descriptive and exploratory research in detail by using MCQs. So these two are the research types and these two are the important topics because on this topic every year you will be asking three to four MCQs in the entrance test and that's why I have covered all the concepts in this topic and that's why after viewing this session all of your doubts will get clear but still if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment box after viewing this session okay so students before starting this session I want to tell you that global online team provides you complete course on research methodology. With the help of this course, you can guaranteed qualify Geetam University's research admissions test in the year 2023. Because in this entrance examination, you will be asking 50% questions on research methodology itself. And that's why whenever you score more marks in research methodology, then obviously you can guaranteed qualify the research admissions test at Geetam University. So in this course, Global Online team provides you full syllabus video lectures under which theories and MCQs both are available. We provide you full syllabus notes and mock tests. So basically students, we have 10 mock tests like this and each mock test contains 40 MCQs and that's why overall you can solve 400 MCQs over here itself. We provide you more than 1500 MCQs revision PDF. With the help of this PDF, you can revise all your topics in a single PDF. And that's why you will be getting 80% MCQs from this PDF only out of 100% MCQs in the research methodology section of Geetam University research admissions test. And all of these study materials are available in the both the languages. Those are Hindi and English. So students, if you want to buy this course, then you can either download the global online app from the Play Store. For that, I have given the link in the description box of this video or else you can contact me through the given WhatsApp numbers on the screen. So students, the course fees are only 699 rupees, which are really very low. And in this low fees, Global Online team provides you step by step guidance at each and every stage of your PhD admission procedure at Geetam University and as well Global Online team provides you 100% passing guarantee that you can guaranteed qualify the research entrance test at Geetam University. So students your research admissions test at Geetam University is on 25th June and that's why you have only one month in your hand to do your preparations for the entrance exam and that's why students you can do all of your study of research methodology from this course only you don't need to go to the other sources to study research methodology and that's why you will cover all of your uh, study topics uh, of research methodology from this course only and within the minimum period of time and that's why you will get more time to study on other subjects as well so this course is really very helpful to all of you students and as well you can watch demo video lectures, you can give demo mock tests and that too free of cost from the you know global online app. Okay, so which is really helpful. This question is identify the sequence of following steps in mail surveys. So basically you have given here five steps of uh, mail surveys and we are going to be follow them or uh, write these steps in a sequentially manner. Okay. So what are basically the mail surveys? So in mail surveys, survey is administered through mail. So basically we are going to ask the questions to our respondents through the mail. Okay. And that's why there are a lot of uh, procedures in that. The first step over here is select a sample. So you are going to select a sample. Then after that, your second step should be constructing a questionnaire okay so you are going to construct a questionnaire okay then after that your third step should be preparing a cover letter preparing a cover letter now the cover letter is required to encourage the respondents or participants and to introduce the survey and as well it should explain the purpose of survey and it should provide instructions for completing it and focus on importance of respondents participation okay 
then after that your fourth step should be mail the questionnaire okay mail the questionnaire to the participants and your last step should be monitor the written rate of the mail so it means that you are going to uh, follow up your response rate from the participants and the non participants okay as well so basically uh, you know you are going to provide more consent or you are going to provide more information to the non participants so that they will participate in the survey and they will provide you the responses so that students the correct answer for this question should be 4 e a c b d because here your e should be that is select a sample should be first step a should be second step that is constructing a questionnaire third prepare a cover letter should be your third step b mail the questionnaire should be your fourth step and monitor the written rate of mail should be your fifth step okay now next is which of the following is a longitudinal design okay so basically students here we have given different uh, types of designs and from which we are going to identify from this which are the longitudinal designs so whether it is panel study whether it is cross sectional or trend or both one and three are longitudinal designs so basically students longitudinal design is the type of descriptive method okay and uh, descriptive method means we are going to uh, provide the characteristics of a situation event or person or group of people okay so within the longitudinal design we are going to study single individual for a longer period of time okay and that's why longitudinal design has again three types of designs and the first one is panel study okay panel study so panel study is the type of longitudinal design in which unit of analysis is observed at specific intervals over a long period of time now st second study is cohort okay so within cohort study we collect information from group of people who share specific characteristics okay and now the third study design is trend study design okay so in which we focus on same population of people using opinion poll surveys to look at their attitudes over time so basically we provide the polls okay and from the polls we get the opinions from the participants at a specific amount of time or over a period of time from the same population okay that is nothing but the trend study and that's why your correct answer should be four because here panel study and trend study both are the types of longitudinal designs and cross sectional study is again the another type of descriptive study design so cross sectional study is exactly opposite to longitudinal design so within the cross sectional design we study different population or different uh, variety of population at a specific unit amount of time not a longer period of time okay and that's why the correct answer over here is four okay now next is in descriptive research the primary data can be obtained through so in the descriptive research type from which methods we can obtain the primary data so basically students primary data is the kind of data which is grabbed by first user only okay and this is the data which is there at the first time and uh, it is called as the primary data okay so we have the different options observation direct communication with respondents in one form or another personal interview all of the above so basically students there are lots of data collection methods in the descriptive research through which we can collect the primary data so the first data collection method is observation so basically students we use observation as a data collection method so that we can obtain the quantitative data okay now the second one is survey survey is another data collection method in which we can ask the questions to our participants and participants respond to us the third one is case study so within case study design or data collection method we detailed 
get information or we get in depth information from the participants okay now the fourth data collection method is personal interview personal interview is nothing but the face to face interview method in which we ask the same questions or to the range of participants and we get the answers from those participants okay now fifth one is direct communication okay direct communication so basically students direct communication is a speech that conveys clear messages or that clearly directs actions okay so students from these five data collection methods now we can understand the correct answer to this question should be four that is all of the above because here observation is the uh, data collection method direct communication is another data collection method and personal interview is third data collection method and all of these we can use to collect the primary data in the descriptive research okay now next is what type of statistical data are used in educational research so within the educational research what type of statistical data we can use so basically can we use descriptive statistical analysis can we use inferential statistical analysis can we use both of them or none of these so students educational research is the type of research in which we need both kind of data which is qualitative and quantitative okay and that's why when we want to collect the quantitative data and after that when we want to analyze the quantitative data then obviously for the analysis a uh, thing we are going to test it through statistical uh, analysis techniques and there are two types of statistical analysis techniques and from that one is descriptive statistical analysis and the second one is inferential statistical analysis okay so descriptive statistical analysis is computed or to describe characteristics of sample or population in totality okay so basically here we are going to describe characteristics of a sample through the computation okay characteristics of samples so descriptive statistical analysis includes mean mode median standard deviation then correlation okay and as well there are another type of uh, dispersion techniques uh, for example variance okay so all of these are the descriptive statistical analysis okay now inferential statistics what is that so basically it is used to draw conclusions or generalizations beyond the sample with known degree of accuracy so basically descriptive statistical analysis has limitations up to the samples only but uh, if i want to make the generalizations beyond the samples then i will use inferential statistical analysis so basically uh, you can say a parametric test is the infer inferential statistical analysis then non parametric tests are inferential statistical analysis and we are going to see these parametric and non parametric uh, tests in the upcoming videos as well we are going to see mean mode median standard deviation correlation variance in upcoming videos so don't worry and that's why the correct answer over here is 3 that is both of them because here we can use descriptive statistical analysis and inferential statistical analysis both okay in educational research okay now next what does descriptive research include according to van dalen so according to van dalen there are three types of studies which are included in descriptive research and those are first one is survey studies so within the survey studies we are going to ask the questions to the participants and participants respond to us so in the survey studies we are going to deliver open ended questions in which we get the descriptive answers and as well we include the closed ended questions uh, from which we get the closed answers basically we provide the choices to the open a uh, closed ended questions and we get the answers from that those choices okay now next one is interrelationship studies interrelationship studies 
so into these studies basically we rely on both the things and those are facts and theory so these theory and facts both are interdependent with each other so if i want to study on facts then i will think about theory or i will study the facts based upon the theory and if i want to explain the theory if i want to prove the theory then i will take help from the facts okay and this is nothing but interrelationship studies and the third study is developmental studies so within the developmental studies as the name suggests developmental so we are going to study the development of each and every object for example if i want to study the development of an organism in a human being for example i want to uh, study the development of um, a particular organism such as heart then from a single cell i will see its development okay towards a proper heart so this is nothing but growth of a single cell towards the heart and this is the nothing but development of each and every stage okay and this is nothing but developmental study so these are the studies which are included in the descriptive research because these are the studies in which we are going to describe the characteristics of the things okay and that's why the correct answer over here is all of these okay now next is what new product should be developed is an example of which type of research okay dash uh whether it is causal whether it is descriptive whether it is exploratory whether it is none of the above so students if i want to understand or if i want to get the answer for the question what new product should be developed then in that situation which kind of research type i need to follow so causal research type is the research type in which i am going to identify or i am going to establish the causal relationship between the two variables such as independent variable and dependent variable or you can say cause and effect variable okay within the descriptive research study i am going to describe the characteristics whatever they there are and in the exploratory research type i am going to explore the things it means that i have basic idea about the research or you can say i don't have that much information about the research study and that's why uh, i'm going to explore the things so basically exploratory research type is incorporated so that i will get the answers to the questions why how and what so if i want the answer for this question what new product should be developed then for this kind of question i will follow exploratory research because here i will be getting the answer for what okay what and that's why the correct answer over here is third that is exploratory research type okay next is which of the following would be true regarding exploratory research so regarding exploratory research we have given four statements and from these statements we are going to identify two statement re re relevant to exploratory research so first is exploratory research is highly structured exploratory research is very formal exploratory research determines causality exploratory research is both unstructured and informal as i have told in the previous question that exploratory research is incorporated so that we get the answers to the questions why how and what so basically whenever i have a very basic information about the overall research topic then i will follow the exploratory research so that i will get a uh, information about further research and i will understand how i am going to deal with further research okay and I, and that's why within the exploratory research i am going to develop the hypothesis i am going to develop the hypothesis and that's why there is no any kind of a rule while doing the exploratory research as well i can use unstructured format over here i can use informal techniques such as i can use informal data collection methods as well exploratory research does not determine causality 
because here we are going to develop the hypothesis only and that's why we can't determine a uh, causality between the variables in such kind of research and that's why the correct answer to this question is 4 because exploratory research is both unstructured because it is not structured and as well it is informal because here we can use informal data collection methods over here as well such as we can personally talk with the participants okay or uh, such as we can uh, personally uh, go to the areas where i need to find uh, out the data and that's why informal ways can be followed over here okay and that's why the correct answer over here is 4 so you can understand here that the characteristics of exploratory research are they are unstructured they are informal okay and that's why the correct answer is 4 in which research type the research design is flexible okay so here again we have given four types of research and in which research the research design is flexible so whether it is descriptive research whether it is explanatory research whether it is exploratory research pure research so flexible means there are no any rules okay we can follow a any kind of a step we can follow any kind of informal ways while doing the research this is called as flexible so within the descriptive research whatever incidents whatever situation or whatever person over there we are going to describe the characteristics of that thing as 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 there it is and that's why this is fixed research design we are going to follow the fixed research design over here there is no any flexibility so this option gets eliminated in the explanatory research design we are going to explain the relationship between the variables and that's why whatever relationship over the over there between the variables we are going to explain it is as it is and that's why this is as well the fixed research design we are going to follow the fixed research design over here and that's why this is also get eliminated within the exploratory research design as i have told you earlier in this video this is uh, you know unstructured and as well there is uh, no any rule to deal with it and that's why this is flexible research design okay that's why the correct answer to this question is third and peer research or fundamental research is the research in which we are going to expand our knowledge we are going to formulate a principle or theory or law and that's why this is as well the fixed research design so this option gets eliminated and that's why the correct answer is three that is exploratory research which among the following are possible goals of an exploratory study so here we have given uh, four options a b c d and uh, in that we have given statements uh, about possible goals of an exploratory uh, exploratory study and we are going to identify those possible goals so first is discover future research topics then expand understanding of a topic test hypothesis develop hypothesis so students until now now you have understood that what is exactly exploratory study and that's where the possible goals of an exploratory study are first one is we are going to discover the future research topics okay future research topics because here we don't have that much information about the future research topic and that's why within the exploratory study we are going to uh, collect the preliminary data so that uh, we can discover future research or uh, feasibility future research topics okay now next one is expand understanding of a topic yes we can as well expand the understanding of a topic in the exploratory uh, research study because we don't have that much information about the topic and that's why we can expand uh, the uh, understanding of a topic by collecting our uh, data and so that uh, we can do the next research procedures based upon exploratory study and the third goal is that to develop a hypothesis that i have told you earlier in this video that we are going to develop the hypothesis in the exploratory study okay so we don't test hypothesis over here there is no need to test the hypothesis because there is no any kind of a conclusion over here we are going to only develop the hypothesis in the exploratory study we don't test it okay and that's why the correct answer to this question is second that is a b d are correct because only these are the possible goals of an exploratory study okay 
next is in which type of research hypothesis is vague vague means not clear or not defined okay so in which research type hypothesis is not defined so whether it is causal whether it is descriptive whether it is exploratory or none of the above now students all of you understood that only exploratory research design is the type of research design in which research hypothesis is not clear or it is not defined because in the exploratory research design our final step is to develop the hypothesis okay because priorly we are not able to understand what is the research is about and that's why here we are going to collect the preliminary data and finally we are going to develop the hypothesis and that's why the hypothesis is not vague sorry hypothesis is vague over here that is it is not defined okay and in the causal and descriptive research types hypothesis is clearly defined and so that we are going to test the hypothesis over here but in the exploratory research design we don't test the hypothesis we only develop it okay because it is not clear and that's why the correct answer over here is 3 so students thank you for watching this session i hope all of you understood what is exactly descriptive research uh, type and what is exactly exploratory research type and i have included five questions for each topic and i hope all of you understood very well the concepts of both the research types and still if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment box okay